Welcome back to another 10 minute talk. Today, we're going to talk to you about our favorite post workout meals, favorite post training meals. Now, don't for one second think that this is the most effective post training meal or the most scientifically backed post training meal. This really is just preference. Well, it's not like the best post training meal, it's literally favorite post training meal. Yeah. Currently, I'm not saying this is my favorite post-training meal, but my current post-training meal is usually I have about two different, two bagels toasted, and then I will have just a protein shake. So currently my macros for after training are 75 grams of carbohydrates and 50 grams of protein. So it's actually pretty boring. Currently what I have post-training is a bottle of Lucas 8 and a litre of water, and I don't eat after that. You don't eat. But my favourite right. post-training meal that I would have eaten fairly consistently post-training a couple mm-hmm. of times a week is normal plain pizza and then some sort of caffeinated drink. Wait, what's normal plain pizza? Like margarita? Margarita pizza, yeah. I will stretch as far as a pepperoni pizza, but you will not get me going anywhere more exotic. How often were you that. doing that? Uh, twice a week, I'd say. Two or three times a week, maybe. That explains why you're 130 kilos. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm 125. Because <laughs> you've cut out all the pizza post-training. I love pizza post-training. Particularly if it's an evening training session. Yeah. I don't really like a post-training if it's like an afternoon session or a morning session. Definitely not. But in the evening, you're like winding down big, large pizza all to yourself. It just has everything you need. Obviously, it doesn't have any protein in it, which is massively something you do need. But I just love it. There's something about that insulin spike as well and just send you off to sleep when you get it back. Isn't, uh, it's Mikey Mushimeshi, if you don't know who he is. He's uh, one of the best nogi jiu-jitsu grapplers at the moment. And he fasts all day, so I think he has water. But in the evening, he eats supposedly somewhere in the region of 7,000 calories worth of pasta and homemade pizzas. I don't know if it's actually 7,000 calories because he weighs like 50-odd kilos. Uh, he's absolutely ripped, to be fair to him. Mm-hmm. But in the evenings, he doesn't eat. He trains probably three sessions a day, realistically. A lot of rolling, a lot of drilling. And then he will just gorge himself on that food in the evening. Now, it is a little bit strange. Mikey is a very endearing character, though. Yeah. He's, uh, he's quite, um, I'm not going to say nerdy, but... Quirky. Quirky is probably a better word. Yeah, if you look him up and even if you know who he is, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But he eats that pizza post-training or pasta homemade pasta and they've done a couple of videos of him cooking with it and he I think he buys pre-made dough but he lives in Singapore a lot now so I don't know where he's getting pre-made dough he was getting like Italian ingredients and stuff if I really had to I think one of my favorite meals after training is if you're if I'm gone training somewhere which hasn't happened in a while I suppose if I'm going let's say I went and trained with um, Clarence or something a couple of years ago Driving back, it'll be late in the evening, so it would either be McDonald's or if I didn't eat until I got home, it would be a lot of cereal. Yeah. Like so much cereal that you've kind of cut the top of your mouth? Yeah, I I do the cereal after training quite frequently now. Yeah. But the problem is then, I find that, because obviously you don't sit down and have one bowl of cereal. No, who does? But then you end up having like two and a half or three bowls of cereal. You've nearly a litre of milk. Yeah, what's wrong with that? It's just a lot of milk to be having like. Why? Because you've already drank a bottle of Lucozade and a litre of water. Right. And then another litre of fluid on top of it 20 minutes before you go to bed. I don't see anything wrong with drinking a litre of milk. Yeah. I I, sl- no, it's not the milk. It's just the total fluid volume. The fluid volume. So cur- the pishing, like. Currently, I have intro workouts. So that's one of the things Alex Kegel is, uh, not to be confused with Alex, our editor, has kind of introduced my training is intro workout carbohydrates. So they were 50 grams. They used to be 75 grams. Now it's 50 grams and it is 10 grams of creatine and then 10 grams of essential amino acids in the intro workout. I won't lie though, I've been getting a lot of duds in terms of the flavors for my (laughs) intro workout. The carb stuff, it just doesn't make sense to me. I've had three different brands in a row, just maltodextrin, most of them, and one of them was okay. One of them, I had a huge tub, like a two and a half kilo tub, because it was a pretty good value. It's just sugar, basically, so it's pretty cheap to get. I think it was one of the Olymp brands, brands and it used to stain my teeth and my mustache blue. No. And it tasted terrible. <clears throat> and it did a really, like, chemically taste off it. 
The current one I have, I actually think is another limp brand and that also tastes pretty poor and it's got this weird kind of odor after like i'll wash the bottle out straight mm. away after training but it's just not it i just can't understand how people are making diluted sugar taste bad it really makes no sense to me surely of all ingredients like who having done taste testing yeah. for seek asleep having we lots of it a lot of taste testing and getting the flavor right which is one of the things people say to us that they really like i just don't understand how people tasted these things and they're like yeah let's let's sell this to people let's get this out there but the other thing is is there's no reason it shouldn't taste class every single sports drink if you drink like Gatorade mm-hmm. Lucasade any of those they taste phenomenally good yeah particularly the full fat full sugar ones mm-hmm. they taste great you know yeah my I really need to get into the intro workout hydration yeah. I had this thing for ages where I didn't drink anything didn't take in anything except a heap of caffeine and nicotine during hard training sessions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, now that I'm doing jiu-jitsu and training sessions are going on a bit longer, I really need to get into that. Um, It is something I'd say in the next kind of month or two, I'll start refining. I suppose the 10 I use Vincent before training is probably you should be be having some carbohydrates. Yeah, I just can't understand how companies have made 50 grams of sugar taste like uh, unappealing. Very unappealing, I'm not going to lie. For a little second now, let's bring it back to the post-workout meals. Right. And things that taste great. Go on. Coming up in my teenage years, the post-workout thing to have mm-hmm. above all else was chocolate milk. Oh, that was such a cliche. In it was. The late 2000s, 2010, 2011, <clears throat> chocolate yeah. milk was like, it's got all your protein, it's got all your fats and your sugars and stuff. Yeah. Now and can, it tasted amazing. Yeah, that was uh, you were getting twelve hundred calories worth of of ca- twelve hundred calories worth of chocolate milk after training. Yeah, for people maybe as a growing teenager, you probably do need to do it. Maybe for playing rugby, but there was a lot of people who were having that after training who definitely, definitely didn't need it. I think for so in my case, it was the perfect thing. Right, it was literally you couldn't have formulated something more perfect. Mm-hmm. But then you'd be training at a gym with somebody who is like on the treadmill for 45 minutes mm-hmm. try and lose some weight and they're taking on the litre bottle of having more chocolate milk you know my in college I was uh, obviously quite frugal with what I was eating so usually I just had scrambled eggs and chorizo after training from fourth year that was like one of the things I used to eat after training when I went from like 90 to 100 kilos <laughs> like my it was literally I just had three meals and then some coffee before training but it didn't matter when I was training I just trained whenever and and then I had a, would have a monster during most training sessions. I was full sugar monster, obviously. And then I just had my meals based on when I was going to have them because there was wasn't the much well, a lot of leeway to be honest, given the budget for food. But I used to basically most meals was load of eggs, like six eggs, and chorizo because you just don't really get sick of eating that. No, it was really cheap. It it always tasted good. It was really easy to make, and it didn't rely on buying a lot of meat. Sometimes I'd add veggies like peppers and onions uh, completely divided carbohydrates but it obviously it didn't hold me back at the time but uh, probably not the most recommended post-workout meal I do ever. know nearly every post-workout dinner I had in college was some venison whether it was minced or or just diced up mm-hmm. or uh, slow cooked for a long time that was what I ate pretty much every day whether it was with potatoes or rice then was the the only defining factor if I yeah I wish I could teach myself college self how to cook food properly or not even cook food properly but just the meals that you could make that would still be cheap like with your pasta your rice or your potatoes and then buy an appropriate amount of food I remember one time there was lamb on sale and if you're not from Ireland lamb is generally very expensive because it's usually of like the highest quality you can get and if you see lamb on sale it means it's usually what's called a wetter uh, which is a lamb which is over a year old or it's basically a sheep mutton mutton and it's terrible <laughs> and I bought it on sale and I think this is the closest I've ever come to dying I remember eating it after training it was this big chunk of lamb and obviously if anyone eats lamb you'll know that lamb fat is brutal if it's not of good quality and this I'd say a foot long 
I just shoveled it in, obviously. And this foot long length of lamb went down my throat, and I had to pull the whole thing out. I was genuinely, oh, no way. I genuinely thought it was. I thought closest. it was going to be a food poisoning incident. No, no, no. I, I think it was the closest I've come to choking on food. Honestly, I don't. I got it out myself, so it was okay. Like, so it didn't matter. My housemates were there, but really and truly. Obviously, I finished the meal after, like, but it was I was harrowed for a couple of minutes and I went back eating. But genuinely, the closest I've come to choking as an adult. That is gruesome. No, I mean, like, oh, it was gruesome after, but I'd say maybe not a foot long, okay. Say probably, um, maybe like six or seven inches long. Certainly 12 or 13 centimeters. <laughs> it, was, it was no joke. Like, I mean, uh, it's the last <clears throat> time I ever bought bad lamb. Not the first time you've ever said that six or seven inches is a foot long, though. You can't, uh... You can't say that on YouTube. Uh, last Honestly, thing. I could have died now. You're just trying to make a joke. Out of it. I could have, <laughs> I'm sorry. I could have I'm sorry I didn't asphyxiated take your, myself. Sorry you didn't take your trauma seriously enough. So on the story of eating dodgy things nearly killing yourself in college, mm-hmm. I used to do this thing where I'd have some chicken chopped up and if there was some left over or if some wouldn't fit in the pan, I'd just put it in the freezer. So you'd have like a kind of Chinese takeaway box full of random bits of chicken. So put the chicken in the pan made that you know that mcdonald curry sauce yeah made that put that in the pan oh. and then oh yeah mix it all up let it cook away for a while obviously i was slightly delirious and bait from training i wanted to eat very very quickly didn't really realize that the chicken hadn't been cooked mm-hmm. so i bit into the first bit and do you know when chicken's translucent when it's not cooked uh stop it realize it was translucent what and then, the fuck were you drunk no just after training, I can still remember what house we were living in. Bit into it, realised it was translucent, and then I was like, the odds of this having salmonella in it is so low. No, oh, man. And then ate the rest of it. You, d- you get food poisoning? I just had shits for like an hour and I was grand. I've never had food poisoning where I've been like, oh, I'm going to die from this. Now, I've no. certainly had food poisoning. Uh, mm. The worst, of course, being in Uzbekistan. But I've never had food poisoning where I thought I'm going to die. I felt terrible, obviously. But I've never had food poisoning where I'm like, ah, oh, this is the one. This is the one that's going to kill me. I'm just convinced after that experience with raw chicken that it's not that big a deal. That's uh, definitely insensitive to people who definitely die from salmonella. Yes. Yeah. Thanks yeah. very much for watching. Yeah. If you have a topic you'd like us to talk about for ten minutes in one of our ten minute talk segments, please pop it in the comments down below. If you disagreed with anything, uh, just keep your thoughts to yourself. Basically, chocolate milk is the best. On the subject of correct nutrition, this episode is brought to you by Seek Asleep. Uh, it helps you sleep better. Why does it help you sleep better? Because it contains some of the most important micronutrients you need to get to sleep at night. You can purchase it in a 30 sachet box, which is about a month's supply, and you can get it on a little discount on subscription.